Hello everybody, it's Dr. Zeno with Jacob in the background. What's going on? And Timmy D with 15 minute fuel, which is in 15 minutes a day. I'm gonna fuel your mind. Your body and your future. There we go. See it's catching on. It's catching on. Okay, so we are in lovely Colorado Springs. Let me show you what that looks like here. If this will get it. Look at that, dude. How cool is that? Beautiful. There's the mountains. Love it. All right, so we're here at, uh, I came here to uh, do a seminar called Reach Live Academy, and Peter Vargas uh, does that. So the cool thing, so I'll tell you the premise of this week. So you saw the We Are Heroes keynote, you see, you see everything going on, and then it's about creating opportunity. So remember that the hero, in order to become the hero, what's the three things I tell you guys? Number one, you gotta embrace the hero mindset. You know, bring that hero pride and that hero ego in there. Because you got to know, you got you to gotta feel pleasure and satisfaction about what you do and what, and, and what you do for others, right? You got to have, you know, the qualities you've been given or the gift or the idea you've been given. You have to find pleasure and satisfaction in that. And then with the ego, you have to have a sense of confidence and importance because that's how you become a hero because you believe it's a message. And the reason what makes it so sweet is that third factor, the humility factor, because you're aware of your weaknesses and every hero has to have a weakness. Every superhero has a weakness. And when you're self-aware of the weakness, that's where the humility comes from. That's where the courage comes from. And so then the three ways to destroy, the, to defeat the secret identity and awaken your hero is embracing that hero mindset. And the second part is to I used to say discover your, your unique gifts and talents, but remember, I'm changing the verbiage. It's remembering your unique gifts and talents that you've been blessed with. Because it's not, discovery means that you gotta find it. It's out, outside of you, it's somewhere. I gotta go uh, find it underneath a rock, but that's the lie of society. It's like it's been there. You know, you, you think of yourself from a spiritual reference. You, you didn't just come about when you were birthed. Like it's been in you, you just have to remember and choose to remember it. And there's a lot of signs that we go through that we realize it is something. And, you know, one of those ways to remember that what your gifts and talent are is um, what do you do that when you do it, you have what I call supernatural energy. You just have, it's like 10 cups of coffee. You start sweating. I mean, you just love doing it. You could do it all the time. People come to you and ask advice for it. Uh, when you do it, you forget to eat. Or if I gave you $50 million, that's what you would do. That's, that's the hint of a conscious mind that you're, you're going, you're in your flow, you're in your zone, you're, you're unique gifts and talents. And the third factor is now choose your vehicle of influence, right? So what's your vehicle of influence to go out and share this message with the world? So that could be speaking, right? One to one or one to many. That could be video, like we're doing now, webinars, um, videos like you see us do, TV, audio, that could be podcast, radio, or written. You're a great writer, articles, writing a book, doing blogging. So find your unique vehicle. So my vehicle that I chose and I love is video and speaking. So this uh, brings us to this uh, event. So this event's called um, Reach Live Academy where there's meeting planners and they teach you how to tell your story, great. And I do well with Roberto, so that's just kind of my story part. But then how to get on those stages, the big stages. We're not talking about the local rotary, even though we love the local rotary, we're talking about going big, thousands of people and really making an impact. And then scaling, you know, how to take your message, because that's the thing, right? All of you would do what you love to do, but you always think you always think that in your mind, like, I would love to do this, but my day job is paying the bills, right? You know what I mean? So financially, a lot of times you, you don't go for what you want to do because you're like, there's no monetization in it that you could see, right? So that's why you would love to do it. You say, well, once I accumulate enough money, it allow me the freedom to do what I love to do. We get caught in that trap. But this also teaches you how to, of course, ethically and, and uh, rightfully so, you know, take your message and be able to create value to others where it can become a business for you. Because I think that's a holdup of a lot of people, right, Tim? It's yeah. like, man, I would love to cook or I would love to bake cookies or I'd love to just um, counsel people. But, you know, because you love to do it, you want to do it for free because that's your servant heart, right? But then again is... You know, there's a time that has to be exchanged. So they teach you the really nice, uh, elegant way of being able to do that and provide, because you're providing value for people. So that's what we're doing. And uh, so a uh, part of this, this weekend, as a VIP, uh, you get a speak off. And the speak off is this. Today, we have three minutes. So three minutes to tell your message and three minutes in a, in a, in a panel of, of meeting planners. If you pass this test, 
you go on to tomorrow night, the 12 finalists, and you have five minutes, and then you compete to win stages. And uh, we did the three minutes, it was really good. I brought Justice inside. We couldn't videotape it, so you wouldn't see that, but I brought Justice in there with me, because you know, I didn't want him in there personally, just because I get emotional to see him there, right? So you can see when I talk about Justice for my kids, there's just something in him, because I think when I see him, it, uh, it reminds me of myself when I was younger, but it reminds me of my insecurities when I, were young, when I was younger that he doesn't have, right? So it's just like he brings memories of my childhood. He brings memories of, of his childhood. He brings memories of just a beautiful future. So when you get hit with all those memories and you're trying to perform, it, it really opens up your heart. But then again, that's exactly where I want to be. If I'm going to be speaking in front of people or judges, I want to make sure that I'm 100% heart heart. Um, and and uh, it doesn't matter if I forget the words, you know, I just that's because your heart is a true authentic hero. You know, that's exactly what it is. So he was there and I'm glad he got to see that experience. And, you know, I'll get an email tonight knowing if I made it, but I personally believe I did. My last word was right at three minutes. They were so impressed. And but, you know, they don't realize I practiced that thing at least 200 times. And uh, it's all the stuff behind the scenes. And so tomorrow night will be the five minutes. So, you know, just going on, just giving you an update on that. Also, episode 32 came out today, all right? So hopefully you guys enjoyed episode 32. I mean, that, that was a great one. They're all great, but you see how they're unique and different. Uh, that one we talked about, um, you know, that one, that one uh, there's that one chiropractor who was basically given five years to live and he saw it as a curse, but then we turned around and showed him what, almost what a blessing it was and just to have a different perspective on if you knew you only had five years to live, how would you live your life? And uh, it was super powerful. So that was just one of the, awesome scenes on there and uh, so make sure you guys check that out share it like it because when you share it it really spreads the message so we're really starting to pick up some uh, definitely getting some traction on Instagram uh, we need a little bit more traction on YouTube if you guys can help us out there and Facebook keep on keep on piling it and telling your friends and by now in, epi in 32 episodes and um, which is what almost 11 weeks right almost 11 weeks where if you could, you could see the consistency and the quality and now you know exactly what you're getting. So you should feel pretty confident to refer or show your friends that. So today I'm going to talk about uh, one of the teaser videos we had about the checklist. You know, when I was standing there talking about, you know, in life, for the, I believe it's the first 30 years, but it could be longer than that. We, we, we live life by a status quo checklist, right? So what happens? You wait, you know, as, as, as early as you know, you go to school, Right, you got to do kindergarten. Boom, got to do that. And remember, you you the idea of getting held back was like horrific. Definitely. I mean, you heard about the one kid got, that got held back, and it was like, I don't want to be that kid. And you know, you don't want to get an F. You don't want to fail. So we we had we had this subconscious checklist, right? So first grade, second grade, third grade, all the way to twelfth. You know, middle school for some of you guys. Um, a junior high, then high school, then after that, college, whether it be community college or regular college, we have to go to that, good. And then after college, you get a good job, right? Get the job. And then I know a lot of times, especially uh, my wife, you know, they, uh, and she went to a very uh, Christianese type of school where, I mean, you know, hey, at 18, you better start bearing some babies. So a lot of her friends got married immediately after high school because that was the thing to do, right? Because God forbid you, uh, you lost your... Um, morals and, and have premarital sex with somebody. So you better just get married. So that doesn't happen. So what winds up happening? They got married 50%. At least she said, actually all of them that she knows are divorced, went through the pain of that. So it became like this checklist of the status quo and dogma. So you go through school, check, 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 you get a job, check. And then you feel the pressure. I need to find, okay, this, and I mean, poor girlfriend and boyfriends between that 25 and 30 year old mark. Cause then you're like 25 or 30, this, I got to meet the one, right? So it almost becomes like this, will make it fit, right? So you meet the one who's a square that you're trying to fit in a, a circle, peg, a circle hole, and you but and you, you force it, you force it. it, it gets squeezed in there, right? So you force it, then you, you say, well, uh, these things we're not congruent on, but I'll just look the other way, and they're the ones that get you. I, I'm sure many of you watching this, you know what I'm talking about. So you feel, well, that's the time, and how about that? It used to be between 30 and 35. If you're not married, there's what? something dra drastically wrong with you. You're like, wow, she's not married at 35. She's got to be a psycho. <laughs> right. Right. So all this stuff, check, check, check. So you do the check march, you get the kids, boom, check. Dog, check. Fish tank, check. Paycheck, check. House, check. So cars, check. You know, you get all these things stable. And then come 30, 35, you're like, well, due to status quo in society, you know, I'm, 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 we're making the income. We, we have 
the white picket fence, so to speak. You know, we, we line up, we made it. Like they told us, but well, we were told that if we do these things and I, and I checked it off, we, we did it. So how come I'm so unfulfilled? How come I'm so depressed? How come I have this divine discontent? Because you realize you were living a life according to somebody, somebody else's values, right? It wasn't your values. No one sets you down and said, well, what do you want to do with your life? How do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do? Do you want to go to college? Or maybe wouldn't you like to go travel the world if you really love traveling, right? See all these things, but you didn't feel that you could speak out because you don't want to be seen as an oddball or someone who just kind of broke the mold or, was a, or you would be called the term the rebel. You know, and a lot of millennials, like they say millennials, but the reality is the millennials are really doing what everybody really wanted to do if we had the chance. You know, I wish I didn't go to college. I would have, I would have loved to travel to do different things and, and really find out who I was. You know, it took me 35 years to really start to get a handle of who I was only because at around 33, 35, I'm like, wait a second, I don't even know who I am. I don't know what I like. I'm speaking like somebody else. I'm wearing somebody else's clothes, somebody's shoes. You know, that's a metaphor for, you know, my whole life is pieced apart from different people uh, living according to values. And then you realize I'm just a counterfeit version of somebody else. And then you start the journey of finding, well, who am I? You know, what, what do I love? What do I enjoy? And then you start going through the buffet of life again. And that buffet of life is, you know, if I only did one thing, I don't know what I really like. So then you start searching and looking elsewhere. And then it starts almost like the second rebirth that you go through. Uh, finding yourself. So that's where that checklist, the status quo checklist really gets you. Um, it actually gets you a bit uh, disgruntled. You're like, because then you look back, you're like, I, uh, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years and what they told me how it would be, it really isn't like that. And you realize, well, wait a second. So you either conform, right? Secret idea, you either conform with torment and shrink, or you say, you know what? I don't want to be in the secret identity anymore. I want to become the hero I was created to be. And I'm going to go out and find who I truly am because you know, it's that either, either you have the one life, so you don't want to, you don't want to regret it uh, because regret is the worst thing in the world you could ever have. And so you pursue those things. So this is how, you know, you do the things you love to do, learn how to monetize those things in a very ethical, awesome way. But if you're not even at that point yet, like we're doing, we are heroes, there's no monetization model. But you know what we do? We do the videos every single day because the videos train us to become better. We listen to this. We learn from one another. You know, we do the, the, the vlogs three times a week because it continues to make us better. So we give content. So we still get to do what we enjoy to do. It gives us happiness. It gives us amazing energy. We're our true expressions of ourselves. And anybody watching this could do it, right? It doesn't take, it doesn't, you all have phones, right? So if video or speaking is your issue, you got your phone, you could write. You can put on a blog, so there's no excuse to start moving forward. And as you move forward, what happens? The unknowns hit. So this seminar is an unknown, right? My, uh, I got back into contact with a, a friend of mine, uh, Isaac Jones, and he's like, hey, you gotta meet uh, Peter Vargas. So I met Peter, you saw him on, on the We Are Hero uh, episodes, and he invited me on to the seminar, and we're doing it. So this is an unknown this whole time. We're in Colorado Springs because of an unknown. And it's only an unknown because we chose to move forward with with our, our, our goal. So I didn't sit on the couch, it didn't come to me. We moved forward, we did the videos, we're doing what we gotta do, we're getting better at what we do, we meet the people, we get the unknowns, and now the unknowns provide the opportunity. So and today, we, yeah. We, and then we seize that opportunity. And we uh, go yeah, and you seize the opportunity, as scary as it is, like three minutes. Right. As you can see, I can't talk three minutes for anything, you know why I didn't <laughs> like to, but it was the best learning experience because three minutes was great to really get your message down because it really focused it. And then, so the next stage, boom. So I got in front of people that got to hear me. So tomorrow, you know, make it the finals, five minutes. If I win, whatever, it doesn't matter because it's not about me winning the, the, uh, the contest, even though I always go into win, always. And I feel I can, uh, but I go now. It's not about, it's go to, go to give that message out and to pierce every heart on the true message of the hero. And I really think it's something that people will crave and they're grieving if they don't hear it. And to see the amount of you guys that your lives have changed, you know, I get a, I had a, I had an email today of someone that they they had such a breakthrough and they they had a dinner with their entire family and let them in on this news, not about the heroes, but they had something to share that they they felt bad about sharing, and they were able to have the courage to share with their family, but they they were they were afraid of being ridiculed, ridiculed or outcasted, and he said, you know, I did it and I was received with nothing but love. And so it just shows you, this is, you know, becoming the hero is about the courage, about even though we are scared and we are nervous about going to do it anyway. And when the opportunity comes 
as nerve wracking as the secret identity wants to tell you not to do it, you go ahead and do it anyway. And then the opportunities and the genius happens and you just enjoy the magic carpet ride of life. So that's the status quo checklist. So whatever checklist, think about the checklist you've been checking off. So compared to society, or like they say, compared to the rest of the world, you're very rich. I get it. You know, but the thing is, it's not about you being compared to the rest of the world. It's about you being compared to your potential. Nobody else is. So when you're compared to your potential, it's, there's no comparison. You don't get angry. You don't get mad. You, it's about you being the best you could be. You be you. And there's nothing more beautiful than that. So everybody you see that you get inspired by, you know what you're inspired by? A person being themselves, right? I watch a tennis player. I don't follow tennis, but when someone's like their, when their self, themselves, yeah. who's that one MMA fighter? McGregor? That, Conor McGregor. So Conor McGregor. I don't watch fighting, but when you watch him speak, I find myself captivated because you're seeing a guy who just is his raw, authentic self. No, it's not about if you like him or not. Right. But to see someone just being themselves and raw, it's, it's attractive, it's inspiring because... That's the hero in you going, I want to be 100% who I was created to be. So seize the moment, go for it, choose your vehicle, start doing it every day. That's why I tell you, write every day. Someone says, I don't know what, I said, write every day even if it doesn't get posted. Write every day, start increasing your skills, and then you'll be amazed on the opportunities that open. When the opportunity arises, seize it, because it's going to be a learning experience. It was great today. You know, I speak for three minutes, and they say you're going to get three minutes of feedback. And my feedback was about 15 to 20 seconds because I, they said I needed to pause a little bit longer, but they loved it. So the thing is like, I was ready to learn. And so now I get to make the little tweaks I need to do and we rock and roll. So thank you guys, we're on location at, let me show you again, so if in case you forgot, look at this. Beautiful Colorado Springs, look at that. I love mountains, because maybe I grew up in Florida and I live in Texas, we don't have mountains. So have a great day, and uh, I will speak to you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Thursday. Now, the speak-off is tomorrow night between 7.30 and 9.30. So I will be, I'll be able to talk to you Friday about that. But Thursday, we'll do something cool as usual. Have an amazing day. Please private message me with any questions or topics. We'll go through that, and um, have a blessed day. Please share. Uh, check out episode 32. And, you know, just, just do good. That's all. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.